Hello everyone, welcome to this last part for this first milestone. So what we're gonna do for this video is we want to fetch every photo we have marked inside the server in, uh, in the first uh, three episodes. So it's gonna be pretty simple. First thing we need to, move to do first is go inside your server and do mix phoenix server to start the server. After that, I'm gonna just run this command here and make sure I'm gonna run, so I'm gonna run photo. And I'm gonna run, I want the ID and I want example the image URL and that's it. So this is almost like what we're gonna plan uh, to do for this one. So go inside your front end and we're gonna install some library here to make it work for React Apollo. So we're gonna add um, Apollo client, Apollo uh, cache in memory, Apollo link HTTP, React Apollo, GraphQL tag and GraphQL. So you can pause the video and just find everything we need to install, but we need that now. So I'm gonna run enter. Also, we run that in the, uh, not in the dev, but in the real dependency. And uh, what we're gonna plan to do for this one first is we're gonna create here a folder called GraphQL inside the SRC, and we're gonna create an index.js. So that's gonna be where everything about GraphQL is gonna start. It's gonna be pretty simple, you're gonna see like 15 line of code for all this installation for now. So we're gonna import from Apollo client, client, gonna import Apollo client. After that, we're gonna import from HTTP, so Apollo link HTTP, we're gonna import HTTP, HTTP link. After that, we're gonna import what's gonna uh, do the cache for us, so the in-memory cache, so cache. So it's in-memory cache. So that we're gonna already create the cache, so we're gonna create an instance of the cache right there. After that, we're gonna create an instance of the link, which is gonna be a new HTTP link. This one gonna take a URE. And the URE is gonna be this stuff right there. So the local host uh, 4000, so yes, uh, Phoenix run on 4000, API slash GraphQL. And finally here, we're gonna export a current client equal new Apollo client for here we pass the link and the cache. So here we have created the client we need for, uh, like uh, to, to, to make Apollo uh, work with uh, the project we have built. So uh, Apollo, like uh, we create, like we, we say to Apollo which link, which URL to go and fetch the GraphQL, we create the cache, and this is what the client needs for now. After that, inside the component, we're gonna create a component called with provider. So this component is the way you need to manage your uh, Apollo stuff, Apollo provider, when you work with React Native, uh, navigation so it's a higher order component so what we're gonna do it's here we're gonna um, import a react component like that and we're gonna also import the Apollo provider from react Apollo so this is the wrapper around uh, for Apollo around react so now we're gonna import the client coming in from the GraphQL folder we don't need to put index because again, remember JavaScript, remember the in, uh, go and take the index if you don't put any uh, file here. And here we're gonna export default, a function called with provider. We're here gonna take a rapid component. So here, it's how you create a higher order component. This higher order component is gonna be a function will finally return a component, so a class, I'm gonna call that, um, return class uh, with provider or I can call that return class CP like that if you want extend component so it's gonna be a component and now here the only thing we're gonna do is we're gonna render and return the Apollo provider we're gonna be wrapped with the client we just create and now here we're gonna pass the rapid component and we're gonna pass in all the props 
you go up like that nothing more so if you have never seen that this is how you build finally um ir other component and this is something you you really need to know when you work with uh, uh, when you work with um, a react so now what we're gonna do it's now we're gonna jump inside the screen file so this one right there inside the screen and now what we're gonna do is we're gonna import this with provider from component with provider and now we're gonna wrap each component with this like that so if you follow what I try to do it's finally it's finally the width provider take the component here and return the component but he wrap this component with the Apollo providers I don't need to say Apollo provider Apollo provider everywhere with the client I can keep my my, my same instance of the client and just do this way so and if you don't know like here if you know redux it's almost like all redux work they do like a, a wrapper here around you and yeah so this is all that work so now here now so we have the, the provider it's create so now we can do the first uh, the first fetch for getting uh, the photo inside the application so you're gonna see <laughs> it's simple it's crazy so we're gonna go to the feed screen and inside this one now what we're gonna do is we're gonna import the gql from graphql tag so this is how you're gonna create your graphql your graphql uh, query and we're also gonna need to use the react apollo and this is graphql right there so now here we're gonna create the first thing we're gonna create is gonna be the query, so get photo. And in this one, it's gonna be just a query where we're gonna ask for the photo. So if you don't know where I take this ID, it's just like that. So no ID in image. But now what I'm gonna do, it's here I'm gonna say ID, and we need also the image URL like that. And I think we have caption. Yeah, I'm gonna say caption and yeah like this and now i'm gonna wrap my graphql i'm gonna wrap graphql with feed screen and now here i'm gonna pass my get photo query so now i'm gonna just remove the hot reload and i made my app crash sorry And I'm going to show you something. I'm going to open React Native Debugger right there. I'm going to show you what we what we receive. A moment. Still build right now. Really don't know why it <laughs> crashed here, but it's uh, sometimes you it's it's code, so you do whatever you want. So here you're gonna see that by doing this stuff here now we're gonna came with some props called data. So I'm gonna already console log the props. I'm gonna say this is the props, and I'm gonna say this that props like that. Okay, and now I'm gonna do a uh, debug yes remotely and now look what I'm gonna receive. So this is the prop. So first time the prop, this is what I got. Now you see I got a this is that prop that data and inside the data I get a loading with true and when the loading is finished, make it a bit bigger, and when the loading is finished, I get the data and now I get a photo, an array of 10 element right there. And this is what I, this is what I have asked. Sorry about this. So now what I can do here. It just finally do a uh, import from oh we have already React Native sorry active activity indicator and in this one what we can do is I'm gonna create here a style sheet also and I'm gonna say right there uh, loading wrapper I'm gonna say flex one 
this defy contains centaur and align item centaur and now here what I'm gonna do it's if this that prop that data that loading so if this are that, that data that loading is true I'm gonna return a view we're gonna have the style of the loading wrapper and I'm gonna show here the activity indicator and I'm gonna say size large like that and I'm gonna need to import the view and now I'm gonna save and now load we're gonna get a loading and it's really fast so we don't really see it but now I'm gonna change the um, the scroll view to be now a flat list so all I'm gonna work it's now I'm gonna put this flat list right there so it's gonna be better for performance than a scroll view and here we need uh, three elements we need first thing the data so this is that proof that data that photo after that we need a key extractor key extractor I'm gonna call this function right there. So the key instructor, it's a way for React uh, for the flat list to find a unique kind of ID uh, to get a key. Like if you came from React in the web, this is like the key. <laughs> but now we told the flat list how to extract the key. So here that's gonna be pretty simple. We say key instructor, gonna here receive the first item. So there's gonna be like uh, this element we have right there. So inside the data photo, get one element. So we're gonna say Take the ID, so we say item that ID, so it's gonna be a unique, and we're gonna set that render item, we're gonna say this that render item, and we're gonna create this function. So render item here, we're gonna receive an object where we have the item, so we are where we have this object right there, and what we're gonna say it's creating a photo card. And we're gonna say in the photo card the data is gonna be equal to this item. So now what's gonna happen when I'm gonna close this stuff? It's we're gonna receive now uh, ten times this dog. <laughs> so you see ten times this dog. So now we need to make uh, to make uh, this value dynamically. I'm gonna remove that here. What you see yes and say this is defined but never used. I'm gonna remove that. And now this is what we're gonna do. It's photo card now receive some data, and the data is um, and the data is what we receive now from the back end. So now we can show whatever we want. So the image here, first thing, gonna not be anymore this dog, but now it's gonna be equal to this that product, that data, that image URL. And now if I save and I refresh my screen, now that's gonna be. The image we have saved inside the database from the URL I give you in the first three episodes. After that, the, the other thing we can already change is gonna be the caption. See, this is a beautiful dog. We can change that, and we're gonna do this here in the meta where we say caption it's gonna be equal to this that props the data that caption. So now I'm gonna go to the meta. The meta, we see the caption. Now, if I save and I refresh my screen, the caption is gonna override. This is a beautiful dog because this is the way uh, this def default thing works. It's if you have nothing, we take that. Else, we take whatever you give, but we don't need that anymore. So now you see we received the the above all to. So if you don't trust me, this is what we get here. All this stuff, the above, blah blah blah. And this is what we ask. The only thing I think we forget is uh, here the caption. I'm gonna just say in my text to put number of line. I'm gonna say two. So what that means it's if uh, I get a caption with too big. Don't think I have here. But what is gonna happen is after like you see here right there, it's too long to be there. So I'm gonna save. I'm gonna refresh. And now we're gonna go to the last one. And now you see, he did uh, React Native take two line number of line, and he put the three dot at the end for us. We don't need to do uh, a trunk head for uh, by ourselves. So that was that set for getting the element there. The only thing I'm gonna maybe add, I'm gonna be 
kind of sample. It's just a one when I uh, I pull to to uh, fetch again. I pull to refresh finally, and look at how easy is that. We're gonna call a function called refresh request. But first, we need here to get an, uh, a state boolean. It's going to be is refreshing. So this boolean is going to be there to know when it's refreshing because what we what we want is we want to show a refresh control inside the flat disk. So a refresh control here is going to be uh, it's going to show like the, the the little loading spanner when you pull to refresh. So we're going to say we, we you need to pull in when it's refreshing, so that's why we we give him the boolean that is refreshing, and also after that he want to get the on refresh function, and that's gonna be the this that refresh request. So if I can show you that, I'm gonna say this that set state is refreshing to be true, and now look what's gonna happen. If I do this and I pull to refresh. I'm gonna keep loading like this uh, infinitely. Well, that's why you do here an asynchronous call. You'll say here it's gonna be true when we start. After that, we say we're gonna call. Sorry, this is my dog. Here I'm gonna call this that prop that data that refresh. Refetch. This is a, a method. Which already built inside a React Apollo, so uh, yeah, so trust me on this thing. And this is a prop uh, we get in here is refreshing to be false at the end. So finally, thing about that, we call the refresh request. First thing we say ref is refreshing. It's true. So we show the refresh. We do a premises here, an asynchronous call where we're gonna refetch the data. So the same data we fetch. So if you have new element, the new element gonna appear. And after that, we say is refreshing its file, so we say it's done. Now, if you see here, I'm gonna show you that with the back end. I'm gonna refetch. You see the fetching, and this is done. So, first thing, yeah, if you didn't know, LXA and Phoenix is really, really fast. So, uh, as you can see, uh, first thing, it's it for sure is in dev, but we get, uh, <laughs> look at the time, it's uh, really, really fast. And for sure, it's 10 photos, so it's not crazy, but. So you see, so that that was it. That was what we need to build for the first milestone. In uh, the second one, we're gonna just do a, an infinite um, pagination uh, in the second milestone, and also we're gonna do the authentication. And uh, the plan is to build an authentication uh, with pass one email, and also an authentication with uh, Facebook. So what I mean by that is we're gonna install the Facebook SDK. In this project, so the user can click on a Facebook button and log with this Facebook from Facebook app from his uh, uh, iPhone and Android phone, and that's it. Uh, this is what we're gonna build in the next video. So after that, it's gonna be easier for us to start to do some action like like, bookmark, or something like that. So I hope you enjoyed this first milestone, and we're gonna talk in the next one. Have a good day, everyone. Bye.